94.5. Welcome back to Happy Valley, where Penn State happens. B94.5. It's the B, baby. It's the Zoo, 272 B945, Friday edition. And we are honored this morning. I don't know if he feels the same way about <laughs> a special guest here in studio making his return to 160 West Clearview Avenue here in State College, Mr. Fran Fisher. Fran? Hey, PJ. Thanks for coming in. Because we were talking the other day. This is the reason we really want you to come in because it was fun uh, talking about this. Because everybody wears the uh, the Penn State logos all the time. I'm trying to see. If you look at uh, Matt's press pass right there at the top of the press pass, they call that... What do you call it? Well, it got a nickname called yeah. the Chipmunk. I don't know who gave it that. I, I think you gave it that. <laughs> no, he created not. it. It wasn't me. <laughs> Uh, so you were here when it got started, though. That's that's the logo. We'll put it up on Facebook. It's the one you see all the time. The one that's literally everywhere. It's at the top of the stadium. If you're looking at the 50 yard line, you look at the press box. It's the logo that you're used to, kind of the the side profile of the uh, of the Nittany Lions. So, but you were here when they came. You were kind of the force behind making it. It was in the 80, 82, 83 category. I was on an airplane with Joe Paterno one day. We we're going someplace, and that's one of the few times that I know that he's not going to walk out on me. <laughs> and I said to Joe, what the athletic department needs is a mark, a symbol of some sort that's unique to the athletic department. And he said, well, how would you go about that? I said, well, we'd have to find a design firm. But I don't have any money in my budget, Joe. Yeah. And he said, well, don't go bananas. I said, okay. So he gave you the card. So we got involved with licensing. And a, a, a patent attorney... Uh, who was our kind of advisor uh, suggested a couple of design firms that I might I might call. I called one and I asked him, "What kind of money should I set aside if I wanted to get a mark?" Oh, he said a couple hundred thousand dollars. So I hung up and I <laughs> called the second guy and he said, uh, "We're not going to talk about money. I'm coming up there." And he did, and we had lunch with Joe, Tim Curley, Jim Tarman, and I. And uh, the guy was a real huckster. And Joe was impressed. Where, and this guy was from New York? Yeah, Dixon and Parcels is the firm, and the man is still alive. He's 90 years old, damn near as old as I. Ooh, excuse me. The same age as you, actually, <laughs> I think, right? And uh, so anyway, we went through a lot of things, looked at a lot of stuff, and, uh, and uh, Joe said, who else do you want on the committee? I said, nobody. <laughs> I said, you give me a five-man committee, we got trouble. We got ten-man committee, we got twice as much trouble. We got a two-man committee, decisions can be made. <laughs> Good. That's the story. So that's what we come up with. So that's the guy what Dixon and Parcels came up with. I didn't come up with so, it. But they sh so but they showed up at that lunch that you guys had, and yeah. they just had that drawn out for you, and it was immediately oh, no, you no, all no, agreed on no, it? No, no, We went through four or five months of trial and error. They ask, uh, I ask, uh, 20 people in athletics to put down a word or two that they thought described the Nittany Lion or Penn State. And everybody put down poise, class, dignity. Nobody put down mean, ferocious, nasty. And I gave that material to this guy. Mm -hmm. So as a result, we didn't have any bared teeth lion or any such thing because that's what people thought should represent. So, that's a long answer. I'm sorry. Oh, I like that. That's amazing. To be, I mean, honestly, if you think back, what, 30 years ago when that happened, or 40 years ago when that happened, to you now, and the fact that it's you? still, yeah, sorry. So you it's said still used everywhere by everybody. Everybody thinks of this. It just happened with four or five guys in a room, and, and this guy uh, that came out and drew it up, and you guys ran with it. So, who ultimately made this decision and said, this is it right here? Was it the... Well, Tim and I. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, so, you guys made the decision. We presented it to every coach. We had a coaches meeting. And we said, guess what? Here's a new mark for Penn State. Now, to suggest that everybody who cheered and jumped up and down, that's impossible. No, you can't please everybody. But it was pretty well generally accepted by the coaches, which to me was important. Because they don't like it, they don't use it. And they don't use it. You see, the ultimate idea was to get exposure so people would buy shirts and hats. Because... The athletic park gets a percentage of those sales. Sure. Okay, that's the story. Fran Fisher, the man, the myth, the legend. This morning, our interns are real excited to have My you. My fans are one place or the other, heaven or hell. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Well, we're all Great big fans. Here. Fran Fisher, this morning, give it up for Fran uh, coming in this morning on the zoo. And he was telling you the story about Sue Paterno 
Oh Time my, for oh chili. My. 30 or 40 years ago, uh, painting the, the Lions trying to get the crowd going because she didn't think they were hyped up enough for that game versus Syracuse. Well, 40 years later, the tradition continues, and we are guarding the shrine tonight. It's the zoo. It's all at B94.5.